Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar on the Critical Language Scholarship Program and Community Colleges. It's one o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Natalie Spencer, and I'm the Program Officer for Recruitment and Selection on the CLS Program here at American Councils for International Education. And hi, everyone. Uh, I'm also here, and my name is Bo Knudsen. I'm the Program Officer for Portuguese, Swahili, Turkish, and Azerbaijani languages at American Councils. Um, so the Critical Language Scholarship, or CLS, the CLS program, is a program of the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, whose mission includes expanding study abroad opportunities for American students to gain critical skills in support of our national security and economic prosperity. While community colleges are an important part of the landscape of U.S. higher education, so many community college students are unaware of the opportunities like CLS, and it's really important for us to get out the word to students and administrators at community colleges across the country. So the goal of this webinar today is to highlight the benefits of the CLS program for community college students and to go over what we feel uh, community college students can bring to our program. Before we get started with our uh, formal presentation, we're curious where everyone's coming from today in the room. So if you could um, find the chat box and, um, and let us know where you're coming from today. And I've got one message in there that says the screen is black. Can someone confirm whether or not anyone can see our slides? We got Oakland Community College, that's great. Houston, okay, no slides. I can see the slides. Okay, it looks like we've got some slides, some no slides. Um, so if, if someone can see the slides, I'm gonna assume that the technical problems, hopefully not on our side um, and We'll have a copy of the slides afterwards, and hopefully if you can hear us, our content will still be um, useful for you today. Um, so thanks everyone for using that chat box and for letting us know where you're all coming from today. That's um, super helpful, Ocean County College. Awesome, hi. Um, great. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay, so to give you a, a roadmap for the presentation today, uh, we'll begin by providing a quick overview of CLS, what the scholarship provides and what the program includes. Then we'll talk about some of our success in working with community colleges and students at community colleges. Then we'll provide some information about our application, which just launched, and some quick tips before we answer any questions. Uh, you can leave questions for us in the chat box at any point during the presentation and we'll go back and make sure we answer them as soon as we're done and with the prepared part of the presentation today. So the CLS program is a fully funded summer study abroad program. It supports U.S. students in all fields to study, uh, uh, sorry, in all fields of study and at all degree levels that includes associate's degrees um, to learn what the U.S. Department of State refers to as critical languages. Um, critical languages are those that are less commonly taught and studied on U.S. campuses, but are uh, nonetheless critical to our engagement with the world. They're languages that are essential to U.S. national security and economic prosperity, and that help prepare students to compete in a globalized workforce. Uh, and the CLS program offers instruction in 15 different critical languages. Brazilian Portuguese is the newest language added to the CLS program. Um, we're excited to be offering that for the first time as part of our 2019 program. Uh, nine of the 15 languages offered by the CLS program require no previous language study. So those are um, those that are left, listed on the left side of this slide. You don't have to have any experience um, learning any foreign language to apply for one of those nine languages. Um, students who wish to learn Arabic, Persian, or Portuguese must complete one year of study in that language by the beginning of the program. Uh, and then students who wish to learn Chinese, Japanese, or Russian must complete two years of prior study. And applicants can meet these requirements through formal classes at the college level, um, or they may substitute other language learning experience for formal classes, such as self-study, tutoring, high school coursework, or knowledge of the language from their home environment. Um, there's space in the application for you to describe your experience and how it meets the proficiency requirement for the level to which you're applying. Uh, in any case, you just must plan to meet that requirement by the beginning of June, which is when um, most of our CLS programs begin. Uh, and then probably the most exciting thing about the CLS program is that it is fully funded by the U.S. government. Um, the program covers domestic travel from each participant's home in the U.S. to Washington, D.C. for a pre-departure orientation, as well as round-trip international travel to your program site. 
the program also covers uh, any applicable visa fees, as well as the cost of tuition, room and board, cultural ex uh, cultural excursions and activities in your host country. And then alumni of our program receive undergraduate academic credit through Bryn Mawr College, uh, as well as a certified ACTFL OPI test score and a certificate to verify their language progress. And you can use that um, for future employers um, or for that transfer credit once if you're planning on transferring to a four-year institution. <clears throat> so um, it's important to keep in mind that CLS is uh, more than just a funding opportunity. It's an all-inclusive study abroad program that's highly structured and focused on immersive language learning. Um, CLS is structured program. Students participate as a group, as a single cohort. It's group-based. Students in each cohort come from all different academic backgrounds, fields, and degree programs. This is intentional because diversity, uh, we see it as a strength of the program. We also actively recruit students from groups underrepresented in study abroad, including students of color, students with disabilities, non-traditional students, and of course, students from community colleges. So we've already mentioned that a lot of the things that make CLS a great opportunity for community college students, but we wanted to highlight some of these again here for you. Uh, we know that lack of financial resources is a common barrier for community college students when thinking about studying abroad, but uh, again, CLS is fully funded and even includes a small stipend to cover your basic expenses while you're on the program. Um, we understand that even with the full scholarship, it can be a sacrifice to spend eight to 10 weeks abroad when you're working towards a degree and might normally spend that time taking classes or working somewhere to earn an income. But on the CLS program, you'll continue to make academic progress and you'll earn transferable credit, which has monetary value. Uh, similarly, some students might worry about their careers and feel that they should be using the summer months for internships or working for extra income. Uh, but the benefits of CLS, um, the benefits that CLS offers end up paying off in ways that can outweigh summer employment by making alumni more attractive as job seekers or as applicants to colleges or universities. While on the program, students get to know uh, other students who come from all over the United States from all fields of study and all different stages of their educational careers and they always comment on how much they learn from each other in terms of ideas, goals for their careers, and sharing experiences. And then once students successfully complete the program, they receive non-competitive eligibility hiring status for US government jobs. There's no requirement for CLS participants to work for the government, and we want students from all different fields. But if you're interested in government work, this is a great added benefit. We're not the only ones who think our program is great. So here we have two quotes from CLS alumni who were community college students when they participated on the program. The first one says, I did not expect that the experience would leave me with a new purpose and direction in my career. Thanks to CLS, my focus has narrowed, but my horizons have broadened. And then another student says, uh, I learned so much more than just Arabic on this program and I experienced things that have changed my life forever. I improved my overall confidence and my ability to solve problems in unfamiliar environments. So you can see here that quotes like these uh, are really encouraging for us to see that our alumni feel that their experience on CLS was valuable. So to give you an idea of the success of community college students on the CLS program, uh, we've had 117 community college students as participants, uh, and those 117 students came from 64 different community colleges around the United States. Um, these numbers grow every year, and we're always working to get more applications from community college students. We're really interested um, in growing these numbers year over year. Um, and in addition to being, um, you know, a great opportunity for community college students. We also see community college students as being particularly good fit for our profile of a successful student. Uh, and we really value what community college students can bring to the diverse cohorts that Bo spoke about um, just a few seconds ago. So we look for students who are career focused, resilient, and flexible. And these are often traits that community college students can easily connect with their own experiences. Um, we also hear from community college students um, who question whether they belong on a program like CLS. So we have this quote from Sheen, who is a CLS alumnus from Georgia Perimeter College. Um, he transferred to uh, NYU, so he's now at NYU, but he was at Georgia Perimeter College, and he says, 
Don't doubt your place on the program. Don't be overshadowed by big name schools. Your community college experience has much more to add than you realize. The work ethic from community college students is incomparable. And we really agree, community college students bring really valuable perspective and life experience to their CLS cohorts um, and typically do really well on the CLS program. And when we look at the numbers, community college students are actually more successful than freshmen and sophomores uh, at four-year institutions when they apply to CLS. So um, if you look at these numbers here on the screen, you can see that just about 7% of underclassmen, uh, meaning freshmen and sophomores at four-year institutions are selected as finalists for the CLS program. And another 7% uh, are alternates or high alternates. And then if you look at the community college numbers, almost 10% of community college applicants um, become finalists and around 8% of our applicants are alternates or high alternates. So this shows that um, community college applications really are competitive when you compare them to students who are in the same um, level of their degree at the same point in their academic career um, as students at four-year institutions. So we don't want to um, limit the um, access to this program for community college students because they really are competitive applicants for these types of experiences. So um, we'd like to talk with you about the application a little bit. Um, the application is available online right now at www.clscholarship.org uh, backslash apply. The application deadline is November 27th, 2018 at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, when you apply for CLS, you apply for only one language and you are applying for uh, just the language rather than a specific country or region or program site. Some of our languages are offered in different countries, but you would apply only for the language. Applicants are required to submit an unofficial transcript and two recommendations. Four short essays and a statement of purpose form the core of the application. In order to prepare a competitive application, we recommend you start early and reach out to resources on your campus for help. We know not every campus has the same number of resources in terms of having a study abroad or scholarship office to go to. But if your campus has a writing center or if you have an instructor who you think might help you, it's good to get feedback as you work on your application. Um, one of the uh, tips that I have um, is to, uh, if you're interested in the CLS scholarship, so first thing, go early to the, the application, look at the essay questions. Um, as I mentioned, the essays and the statement of purpose form the, the meat of the application. And so familiarizing yourself uh, with those questions and possibly printing them out so that you have them out off your computer or off of that application portal uh, will be super useful. Um, so let's talk about resources for applicants. Um, we provide resources for students to help them prepare uh, competitive applications, regardless of the level of support they have on their campuses. Um, sometimes scholarship applications can unintentionally reward students for attending prestigious institutions that devote time and resources to teaching students the ins and outs of application writing. With the CLS application, we want to level some of those inherent inequities by providing really strong resources for all applicants and selection criteria that focus on who can be a successful participant rather than prestige markers. So uh, with that in mind, we have an application tips video that walks through each of the essay questions to explain in detail how you might go about answering each question based on your own experiences. That's available online at that clscholarship.org backslash apply address that's listed here on this slide. We also have an, uh, an online information system at the same site that walks through some of the program details more thoroughly. Um, we have a list of the selection criteria also available on the website if you click on the applicants tab. That way you know exactly what the reviewers are looking for and how to fit your own background and experience into that criteria. Once you open an application, there is a small section with tips for getting a good recommendation and then the application itself has pretty clear and directive prompts so that you can focus on talking about your experience and why you should be selected rather than trying to write a wordy academic essay like you might write for a class. So again, the application for our summer 2019 program is open now. 
uh, and applications, uh, as Bo mentioned, are due on November 27th, 2018 at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, pay attention to that time zone and please don't wait until the last minute. You never know when your computer is going to freeze or something else will go wrong. So we really do recommend getting your application in before that very last minute of the deadline. Um, by late January, every applicant will be notified of whether or not they advance to the semifinal round of selection. Um, that notification is done by email, so please make sure you include a valid email address in your application, one that you're checking regularly. Um, and those who advance to the semifinal round can expect to be notified by early March of whether they have been selected for the award. Um, students who are selected for the award have about two weeks to either accept or decline the offer, at which point then we start offering awards to our alternate candidates. Um, before we wrap up our presentation and answer any questions that you might have, we also wanted to quickly highlight a couple of resources offered through the Department of State. Um, if you're not familiar with the US Study Abroad branch at Department of State, I encourage you to check out their website at studyabroad.state.gov. They have a lot of resources for campuses and for students who are interested in study abroad. Um, one of the resources that is another really great opportunity, particularly for community college students, is the Benjamin A. Gilman International Scholarship Program, which provides funding uh, for students who are receiving Pell Grants to study abroad. Um, they have additional funding also for students who want to study critical languages, um, but that's not a required piece of the Gilman program, so it's a little bit different from CLS, but it, it is another really great opportunity for community college students, and we, in check, we encourage um, any student who's interested in CLS to also look into the Benjamin A. Gilman International Scholarship Program. Um, so that concludes the prepared section of our presentation for today. Um, but Bo and I are happy to stick around for a while to answer any questions you have. Um, you can also always call or email us any additional questions. That contact information is listed here on this slide. Um, we answer the phone uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time every day of the week, um, Monday through Friday. And that email address, CLS and American Councils.org, we're also pretty quick at um, getting back to those messages. So I'm not seeing any questions quite yet. If anybody has any questions, please throw those in there. Otherwise, we'll look forward to hearing from you um, in the, that email address and that phone number once you are able to start applications or start advising students um, in this coming application season. Do any of the attendees here have uh, an idea of what language they're interested in? I hope. Can you write it? <laughs> <laughs> Chinese, awesome, great. Chinese, great. One Chinese. I know we have a couple of advisors in the room too. It's good to see familiar names. So great, if we don't have any other questions or any questions, um, again, we're always happy to answer questions. So just call us, um, email us as you're working on an application or as you're working to advise your students, we're always happy to hear from you. And um, again, oh, your community college doesn't, okay. Let's see, there are a couple of questions coming in. So our student who's interested in Chinese says the only issue is that my community college doesn't offer Chinese. Um, and that's, you know, that is a barrier. That's one of the reasons that we have so many languages that don't um, require that previous experience and we will accept other previous experience. So if you have a way um, of finding online classes, if you have a way of pursuing another experience, we will take um, other experience as long as you can get to the level of proficiency that's required for Chinese, which is that two years. Um, the, if you happen to be Pell eligible, again, that Gilman Scholarship, they, you can study beginning Chinese overseas through the Gilman Scholarship um, if you're Pell eligible. So that's another opportunity um, to look out for. There are other um, funded opportunities, but yeah, for, for our program specifically for Chinese, you will have to get to that proficiency level. Um, currently studying abroad for a semester in Beijing. Can I, can, I, can I add something real quick? Yeah, yeah. So for Chinese, um, you know, if, if Chinese isn't offered at your community college, um, uh, there's a couple thoughts that occurred to me. You might, um, sometimes community colleges uh, have consortium arrangements at the state level with other community colleges uh, where languages might be offered. So um, I know that's not true for every state and every community college, but for some states it's true. So that might be worth uh, checking out to see if there are consortium classes offered. Uh, and then also um, many of our applicants who apply for Chinese have studied Chinese uh, like at the Confucius Institute. Um, I think there's over 100 Confucius Institutes in the United States uh, where Chinese is offered. Um, and usually, uh, I, I can't speak to the prices of the courses, but I know that they're, they're uh, accessible 
um, to people in the community and affordable compared to uh, private lessons. Um, so you might uh, check that out. Um, yeah, and if you're, and that, that same student is saying that they are um, currently studying abroad for a semester in Beijing. So if you're taking Chinese classes and they're accelerated, um, oh, cool. that might be acceptable. It's really more about the level of proficiency. So you'll need to be at the level of proficiency that you would be after two years of study on a regular um, college campus. So hopefully you have um, a professor or somebody who can help you figure that out. Um, we have some other tips online. If you go to our FAQ section about um, figuring out your language proficiency mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have um, a comment from somebody whose community college, again, only offers uh, Spanish and French. So students interested in Japanese can't meet the requirement. Um, that's, again, another um, thing that we hear commonly and Bo's advice to look for consortium agreements, to look for other classes in the community. Um, those, those languages, we just um, don't have the capacity to offer at the beginning level because there is a higher level of access um, on other college campuses. So those ones with, with previous experience required. Um, unfortunately, the way our program is set up, we can't make exceptions. But again, the Benjamin A. Gilman uh, International Scholarship Program offers additional funding for students interested in critical languages. And their list of critical languages that are um, eligible for additional funding is the same as that list um, of our critical languages, it's the same 15. Um, so that can be another way for a student to um, it, uh, enroll in another language program overseas before applying for CLS. Um, and then uh, we have a question about what language programs did community college students attend in the past? Um, I don't have statistics on that in front of me. Um, I'm sure with 117 different participants, there's a chance that they've hit all of the languages. I know we do have, um, community, there are community colleges across the country that do offer Chinese, Japanese, Arabic, Russian, um, some of those languages that have a previous language requirement. So I know we have had community college students um, apply and succeed in those languages. Um, Russian in particular, I know we have a couple of community college alumni that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, but in all those beginning level languages, I'm sure we've had um, community college participants. So it's really just about which language students can make the most compelling connection with their current field of study. Um, we want to see that in the application that they have a career goal in which they can use the language. So we encourage students to look at um, what's happening internationally in their field and to try to make that connection when they're looking for what language to choose. Yeah, um, I would also say, you know, if you're, if you're focused on one language and, and you, you know that your, your school, that it's not on the list of, of uh, courses offered that fall semester, um, you know, it's fine to walk uh, into the world languages department or the foreign language department at your community college and knock on the door and explain to uh, you know, the head of that department, um, the, your interest. Um, I think that, you know, they, they'd be you know, very likely to be sympathetic and, you know, they might have contacts uh, about someone to get in touch with an instructor. Um, I know that in community colleges, sometimes a language will be offered, uh, you know, a couple semesters and then will fall off the, 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 the uh, course, um, off the list of courses at that, that university. But that might they still might have an adjunct um, uh, instructor. Then there might be someone that they are in touch with that they could at least put you in touch with. Um, so you at least have a resource, someone to talk with, someone to determine, uh, you know, what um, what level you would need to get to, um, just as a resource. So so definitely um, uh, don't be discouraged. And and uh, if you know if, if that isn't offered at your community college, you can still reach out to someone. And then we have one um, final question in there about why the CLS program offers Portuguese and not Spanish. Um, so we just started offering Portuguese this year. It's going to be our first year of the program, which we're really excited about. Um, we're offering Brazilian Portuguese. Um, and the main reason that we don't offer Spanish, first, it's not on Department of State's list of critical need languages. Um, there is fortunately no shortage of Spanish speakers in the United States. Um, it's a commonly taught, it is a commonly studied language. Um, there are a lot of students taking Spanish because there's a lot of resources to study Spanish. So for our particular scholarship and these particular goals, um, Spanish is not considered a critical language and so we are not offering it. Um, there are other study abroad opportunities for students interested in studying Spanish. Um, there, there is funding available if, if students are interested in studying Spanish abroad. So um, we don't discourage the study of any foreign language, um, but Spanish just happens to be one that 
there's pretty good access in the United States to study Spanish on US campuses, um, and there are a lot of students interested in speaking Spanish. So these languages are more targeted to those that are less commonly taught um, and that are you know, needed for yeah. uh, our, our engagement with the world. Um, we need more US speakers of these 15 critical languages, um, and, Bra and Brazilian Portuguese is, is just on that list. So hopefully that, that gives you a picture of, of the goals of the program and, and, um, and why we've got Portuguese and not Spanish. So, um, but that's a, it's a good question. All these are great questions. Um, and again, we encourage you to seek resources on your campus, talk through um, these things on your campus. If you're not sure about your language proficiency level, try to speak with um, a language instructor about where you might be in your proficiency look at what textbooks other classes are using, see if, um, if you understand a second year textbook, um, and, and that will give you an idea of whether or not you're at that level. But if you're already in an intensive language study program, you're on the right track, so that's really great to hear. Um, so again, thanks, thanks to everyone for taking some time this afternoon to sit with us. Um, and we look forward to receiving applications from really well-qualified, great community college students. Yeah, thank you for, um, for joining in um, either live or, or later and making it to the end of the, the webinar. Um, I, I'd say, um, you know, do, do go on uh, a line and look at the application, uh, get it started and um, try to submit, you know, really get that application and we really would like to see your application. Uh, we're a stronger program for community college students involvement and um, we'd like to see you among those ranks. <laughs>